Southeast Asia was a focal point this week. President Obama went to Myanmar, the first time a U.S. president visited the country. Also, Premier Wen Jiabao visited Thailand. And the ASEAN summit saw world leaders gather to work out regional disputes and form economic alliances. With so much attention on Southeast Asia, let's look at the economic opportunities there. Joining us from Jakarta is Vikram Nehru, chair of the Southeast Asian Studies at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace. Welcome to the show, sir. I want to ask you, the U.S. has started to liberalize mm -hmm. trade with Myanmar. Has the move been more of a benefit to Myanmar than the U.S.? Well, Phil, it's going to take some time before either side uh, benefits. Uh, the reality is that uh, most of the constraints uh, in the economy in Myanmar are not due to the sanctions in the United States. It's because of the policies that restrict investment and trade within the country itself. And while the country has liberalized politically, there's still a long way to go for them to liberalize economically. So I think once they start liberalizing economically, the suspension of sanctions in the United States is giving a very strong signal for investors to start investing in Myanmar. And I think once that takes place, then I would expect that Myanmar would be a major beneficiary of the lifting of these sanctions. Which, uh, which Southeast Asian economy is poised to uh, outperform or do well next year? Well, Southeast Asia is really quite remarkable, isn't it? Uh, the entire region is doing well. It's shown remarkable resiliency across the board. Uh, we've got the Philippines, uh, Malaysia, Thailand, Indonesia, even Vietnam doing remarkably well throughout the last few years through the global financial crisis. Um, but I expect that while all these economies are going to do well in 2013, Indonesia is probably going to outperform them all. Uh, the expectation is that Indonesia is likely to grow at above 6% next year. Foreign investment is pouring in. Domestic demand is strong. Consumer confidence is at all-time highs. So there are quite a nice confluence of factors uh, that are going to be very beneficial to Indonesia in particular, but also to Southeast Asia in general. What's the biggest risk would be the opposite side of that question to the region? Well, all the risks really are on the outside, and they're very well known by everybody. There's the United States economy and the fiscal cliff that hangs over the global uh, e economy. Uh, there continue to be the uncertainties in the United States, and uh, people are keeping a close eye on what's happening in China, though the latest news from China is good. Uh, so all the risks really are on the, are on the outside. Uh, within Southeast Asia, I don't see too many risks. Uh, there are a few elections that are going to happen in Malaysia, for example. Um, but I don't see that as derailing uh, economic growth in Malaysia. In fact, uh, there has been a lot of fiscal expansion in Malaysia, so that's been very good for the Malaysian economy. So generally speaking, I don't see too many risks from within Southeast Asia. They're really all, all on the outside, all coming uh, from the global economy, and particularly the advanced economies. Let's spend a moment on the, um, the big neighbor to the north. How was China positioned to gain from the growth from these economies? Well, China and Southeast Asia are incredibly well integrated now through a series of trade packs, through remarkable growth in trade, intra-industry and intra-firm trade. Uh, there's now growing infrastructure links between China and Southeast Asia over land into Vietnam um, and uh, increasingly through Myanmar. So China is very closely integrated with Southeast Asia, and this has been to the benefit of both sides. I think Southeast Asia has benefited enormously from China's expansion. And China has benefited enormously from this production network that has been created within East Asia, whereby it can get very efficient, uh, uh, cheap components uh, for assembly, for final shipment to advanced country markets. So I think China stands to benefit a great deal from what's happening in Southeast Asia and vice versa, which is why uh, the ASEAN-China Free Trade Agreement and the latest improvement upon that agreement is all to the good uh, for the future of the economies of Southeast Asia as well as China. Vikram Nehru, thank you very much for joining us from Jakarta, also from the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace.